Hey guys, today we're going to work on some of the AC wiring from this inverter and hopefully by the time that's done we'll be able to turn it on and see if it works. So we're going to be mounting three components today. I have the EKM kilowatt hour meter. Uh, this junction box between the inverter, the meter, and the third device which is a two slot, four circuit, uh, square D circuit breaker panel. So before we begin wiring some of this stuff, it's very important to point out that uh, AC wiring can be very dangerous. It's very easy to be fatal if you touch the wrong cables, if something's energized. If you're not comfortable with what you're seeing here, you know, definitely do not do it and call an electrician. Uh, like I said, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Now the enclosure that this kilowatt hour meter goes in has conduit knockouts in three locations. There's two here, two here, and there's two in the top. Unfortunately, these are all half inch conduit knockouts and a half inch conduit can only fit two number six wires and I need to run four number six wires. Um, so I'm going to have to knock out both of these on the bottom and then the plan is to run two conduits to this junction box. So the wires will run up the one conduit through the kilowatt hour meter and then back down the same conduit into the same box. And I'd like to have it mounted about there. Uh, I'll cut an 8 inch, two 8 inch pieces of conduit. So I put a total of five fittings in this box. The two half inch EMT fittings on the top will go up to the EKM meter. The three quarter inch EMT fitting on the right will go out to the circuit breaker panel. And there is also two half inch flex fittings on the bottom. These two half inch flex fittings will be where the uh, power enters from the inverter. Uh, the flex is just a lot easier to work with off the inverter instead of trying to run hard conduit to the inverter. So next I have my two half inch pieces of conduit. And then that will sit the metering box right about here. And like I said earlier, we're going to use this flex conduit to connect our inverter output uh, to our junction box. So with this flex conduit, you definitely want to use these uh, plastic insulators and they go in like so. like this so your cut end is insulated and then you insert it into the fitting and just tighten down the set screw it's as easy as that now it's important to note that this side says AC input but uh, since I can only fit two number sixes through half inch conduit and I have three number sixes plus a number 10 ground coming off of this I'm using both of these I don't plan to connect this to the grid if I were going to connect this to the grid and this would actually be an AC input, uh, I would likely widen these holes to three quarter inch so I can fit the proper size conduit. But since this is completely off grid, not connected, I'm just going to use both of these holes and run two cables through each. Alright, so there we go. It's a nice, clean, professional look. I kind of wish I would have left them a little longer so there was more play in the conduit, but uh... Alright, so you see I got some of the wire pulled for the inverter down here, and I'll give you a closer look at that. Basically I have the ground connected, I have leg 1 and leg 2 of the AC output, and the neutral connected. Uh, the rest of the connections are not going to be used. Um, the AC connections are 6 gauge THHN, and the ground connection is 10 gauge THHN. So that goes through the conduit up into this first junction box here and you'll see the black hot lead and the red hot lead go up these two conduits and here is the EKM meter the wires come out the conduit through the meter and then go back down the conduit back to the junction box from that point they then go over to the circuit breaker panel I love this EKM meter this meter is perfect for the off-grid application like this but uh, 
When I had this installed previously, I didn't have it in an enclosure. And as part of this upgrade, I purchased the enclosure that uh, is sold with this meter. And this is just a terrible box. I don't know who came up with this. It was like 40 bucks or 45 bucks, I think. And it's just a piece of super cheap plastic. This is made for more than more than six gauge. I'm using six gauge. I think this goes up to like two. There's not even enough room to loop the four gauge or the six gauge around. So the six gauge comes up like in order to make this work, the wire is bent at a sharp U-shaped angle up here, both the red and the black. Now I suppose the idea of this is the wire is supposed to come in here, go through the meter, and then exit the conduit fitting up here. But uh, who the heck wants to connect four pieces of conduit to wire one simple meter? Not me. So if I were going to do this again, um, I would definitely get this meter without a doubt. I love this meter, but I would build my own enclosure. I would not spend the money on the enclosure that it comes with. But that being said, I can put the plate on, and that looks great with the plate on. It's going to be very easy to walk up here and just get an idea of the current power production. Now you'll notice up here I left quite a few loops of wire. It would have been nicer not to have these loops here, but you'll see that this design here suffers from the same problem as the PCM60X, and that is there's, you know, you, once you close this panel for these conduits, you can't access those terminals back there. You have to pull this conduit back. So that's another reason why it was good to use this flex, and uh, also why these loops are up here. So you'll see when I move these back, the wire rolls up in here. So this is going to be my slack wire. So if I do need to pull this back to service it, it will simply pull from these loops through the conduit. Now that you've seen that, I can go ahead and connect it with the screws. Alright, so I got the wires pulled. The wires you see coming in from the left are coming from the inverter. And then the wires you see on the right that are exiting the back of the enclosure are going into the house. You'll notice there's only one bar here, which is intended for both the neutral and the ground. Since this is essentially a sub-panel, we want the neutral and the ground to remain separate at this point. So I'm going to install this separate ground bar, and that goes in the screw hole at the top right there. So of the remaining wires we have left, we have leg one and leg two. They can be either red or black, uh, doesn't matter which one goes where. And then we have the neutral bar. I'm going to leave these wires a little long in here because I may end up replacing this enclosure with the larger one down the line, especially if I upgrade my inverter. Just, just in case anybody's wondering why I leave so much extra slack in the box. And then I'll do the same thing connecting my black wire to the other leg. white wire goes to the neutral bar I know it's hard to see but I'm also connecting the green ground wire to the ground bar we just installed and I'm going to put the other neutral for the line that goes into the house on the other large lug for the neutral bar as well so the circuit for the house will be served with this double pole 60 amp breaker Ideally, I do want to use a 50 amp in here, and I did special order one that is a tandem breaker. So it's got a 50 amp double pole in the middle, and then it's got two 15 amps on the side. And that will allow me to run a separate branch circuit off of this so I can have a standard 115 volt outlet uh, in the shed just for power when I'm working out here, lights and stuff like that. But uh, until that arrives, because it is going to be about a week yet, um, and, and you'll just insert the wire into these two slots and then tighten down the screw. It's just a standard circuit breaker. Put the black one in first. And tighten. All right, double and triple check. All your connections are torqued down properly. Okay. And double check you have all the wires in the right place. The red and black from the inverter go to the red and black lugs at the top. The white from the inverter goes to the neutral bar, the white from the house goes to the neutral bar, and the red and black from the house go to the bottom of the circuit breaker. So this is the cover plate for the breaker panel. We need to remove this blank space since we do have two breakers installed. And just use a pair of channel lock pliers for that. It comes out fairly easily. Put our cover plate on. The screw that secures it. So there we go. Uh, I need to go finish the wiring side in the basement and then we can try turning this puppy on. 
And just a quick shot of the conduit run behind the shed. Comes out of the shed, makes two 90 degree bends, and then it goes down into uh, the basement window. And I actually replaced that window. So when I, so while I was replacing it, I ran some conduit through the cement. Um, so the conduit is cemented into the building. And then in order for EMT to be compliant outdoors, you need to use these special rain tight fittings. And they have a plastic bushing in there that forms a watertight seal when you tighten it down. All right, so I just finished up the wiring downstairs. So now we'll turn on the inverter. And I did sort of cheat a little because I have been using this inverter for a couple days I had some temporary wiring in place and it's hard to see because of the lighting out here, but I'm at 12.2 megawatt hours of power produced. So I'll go ahead and turn the output breaker on. All right, so here's where the other end of those cables go down the basement. You can see the three quarter inch conduit over there that comes in. This is a 125 amp home line square D load center. At the top there, you can see line one and line two go straight down to the bus bars. Because this is still classified as a sub-panel, you'll see the grounding bar over there is separate. And then I've got a few breakers that go out to ancillary circuits. So I have the 50 amp for the main transfer switch, 30 amp clothes dryer, 20 amp water heater, 20 amp washer, and 20 amp air conditioner. Now, of course, all these can't be running at the exact same time because I only have a 10,000 watt inverter. And then down here is my transfer switch. It's a Reliance. I believe it's an A510C. I will double check the model and leave a link in the description below. Basically, it's a 10 circuit, and I can individually switch these circuits between uh, inverter and grid power. That's all I really want to say on the AC side. Again, if you're not comfortable with what you're seeing here, please call an electrician. I'm going to get the cover put back on this panel. Uh, if you found this interesting, please don't forget to hit that like button down below. Questions or comments, leave them as well, and thanks for watching.